Uh, okay, so first you have to export your SAV file that is there in the uh, email that Sir has sent. Just uh, click on open data and you can uh, fix the SAV file that you have. After this, so uh, you have to go to analyze and um, classify. Uh, we have to do a hierarchy cluster because that is what Sir has asked us to do. Uh, so basically, so I have asked us to do uh, the clustering based on the last five parameters. That is basically awareness, attitude, preference, purchase, and loyalty. So just select the last five, and those ones will be your variables. Okay, this is basically those ones are the rankings for you. Uh, go to statistics. Uh, keep it like this. How it is for the first five questions. Uh, for your plot, you need a dendrogram, which is that is how you come to know your clusters. Uh, in method, or uh, select word method, because that is what we're using. Keep uh, everything else the same. And uh, save, uh, keep it as none. And OK. okay I'll share my screen again. Hmm. So this is what we're getting. Other so this is the cluster analysis that we get uh, from the watch linkage method. And uh, if you see, uh, essentially how you read this table is that uh, this is what something Sir has told in the class that in the first stage cluster, the respondent number 40 and respondent number 44 have combined to form one cluster. Similarly, in the next stage, eight and 19 have uh, combined to form a cluster. So this is how you read this. The coefficients are basically representative of the distance between each of those clusters. They are not the exact distance, but it is a representative of the distance. Uh, then similarly, this uh, second half of the table where it says the stage cluster first appears. So that is a representative of when that cluster will combine next. So let's just uh, uh, see one of those clusters. So if you go to row number 24, and read that 16. So you understand that that particular uh, thing will combine next stage in 36. So in the 36, it will combine with the previous ones. In 16 stage, it will see uh, 16 is combining where uh, 30th and in 14th. So 24th stage, it will combine in if you can see it combines in first in uh, 14th stage and then next in the 16th stage. The next stage is a representative of 10th, uh, 16, then it will combine with 244. Yeah, so see. Uh, in the first stage, it's uh, it's written cluster one is 14, cluster two is 44. And in the next stage, it's written 10. So that means in the 10th stage, plus the respondent number 40 will combine again with another cluster. If you can see clearly, uh, 40 is combining with nine to form a cluster. So that is how you read this uh, process. This is not relevant for our analysis right now, but that is how you'll read the table. If you can do it with others as well, so you'll get a clue. Then we go to the dendrogram. It's a, it can be a manual process. I'll tell you two processes of counting the number of clusters that are there. One is a method that we can read through coefficients and other is the one through dendrogram. So if you go to the coefficients, um, yeah. So for, if you see, there is a gradual progression, in the coefficients from 0.5 to one, then 1.5 up until the point it goes to 146. That is the 34th stage. Up until that, there is like a 17 or 15 or five, a very small gradual increase. After that, you see a jump of 30, then again, almost 30, then 70. So you see there is an exponential increase in the distance because coefficient is representative of the distance. That's uh, That will show us that this is where we stop our clustering because the average respondents would not be represent, the respondents would not be representative of the average. They're very far away points. And we'll analyze that through the dendrogram as well. So uh, if you read after 34, how many clusters will be left? So essentially after 39, only one cluster will be left for us. That means that after 38, two clusters will be left. After 37, three clusters will be left. 
After 36, four clusters will be left. And after 35, uh, uh, five clusters will be left. So there, after the 146th position, there will be five clusters that will be left with us. This we can see also through the dendrogram. All right. For the dendrogram, we can see clearly that there are some distances which are very, very far away. On the axis, the horizontal axis, you can see that that is a representative of our distance. So for the first cluster, let's just manually check what, what could be our cluster. So respondents number 40, 44, 9, 15, 26, 28, 2, 41, 43, and 3. This can part, uh, be a part of one cluster. That is how you check the, who all will be a part of your cluster, which will help you in profiling as well. So this is part of the first cluster. Then we go to the next cluster, which will include respondents 1, 27, 21, 24, 34. This is a part of one cluster. Then we go on to see uh, the next cluster. That is 4, 18, 14, uh, 7, 38, 6, and 20. All right. Now this is where your subject subjectivity comes in. Either you can combine respondents 12, 36, 5, 37, 39, 11, 37, 17, also in this cluster, or you can make this a separate cluster and combine the remainder that is 8, 19, uh, 10, 45, 13, so on and so forth till 42 in one cluster. Essentially, since there are five clusters, there will be a sub subjectivity that you'll have to follow and it can differ from person to person at what you think should be the optimum amount of clusters. So according, if, if I would have taken it, I would have taken it from respondent number four onwards to respondent number uh, 20 as one cluster. That will be the third cluster. My fourth cluster will be uh, 12 to 17 and then 18 to 42 will be my fifth cluster. Either you can do this or you can do fourth to 17, one cluster, eighth to uh, 45, one cluster and 13 to 42, one cluster. The reason I'm not doing the latter is because 8 to 45 is too small a cluster. And this is something that might not come in our cluster optimality check, which is something that Sir as well shared. Avi, could you share that screen? So this is the ideal cluster statistics checklist. So number of clusters should be between four to 15. What we are getting is five. So which is uh, right in the optimal range, then the maximum cluster size should be less than 35%. So if I'm saying that from uh, four to let's just say 24, whatever the clusters I made, the size, the number of respondents of the cluster should not be greater than 35% of the total respondents. Similarly, the minimum size should be greater than 3%. It may so happen if I calculate that out of the total respondents, or for, if I have one cluster with only four respondents, that's too small a cluster. So uh, that is the reason. And then the maximum distance from uh, C2 observation between 30 and 100. But this is also that the maximum distance minus minimum distance upon minimum distance should be less than five. If we see that when we jumped, when we saw a jump from 146 to 176, the distance was 36. It was a very big exponential distance. So our, for our clustering purposes, we saw that 36 is that big jump. Again, that comes under the 30 to 100 criteria. So this is how we analyze how many clusters are there and who all will be there in our cluster. Now, can we go back to the dendrogram? For the profiling, we'll need to understand what the average cluster, average respondent from each cluster will look like. So in our case, since the first cluster we have taken is from 40 to around yeah, 40 to 3, we understand that the average is lying over 28 because from there, there is a stem that is taken out. So if we see the data that is that corresponds to 28, we could essentially say that this is the average respondent from that particular cluster. So if we pick anyone from that cluster, be it 44, 49, and that the respondent number 28 could represent the entire cluster in general. Similarly, respondent number 27 in the next cluster could on an average define my entire cluster. 
so on and so forth because you see in the dendrogram a stem is coming out from there that's how you do it so if you go to the data yeah so the 20th respondent from a first first cluster it uh, tells you about all the parameters that were there so there uh, the user uh, gr is the how they are their medium user heavy user or uh, uh, light user so second is medium user so our average respondent from cluster 1 is a medium user the gender 1 represents female so our average user is a female from cluster 1 awareness is 6 uh, for the uh, entire cluster on an average similarly attitude 4 preference 2 purchase uh, is 5 and loyalty is 6 this is how you will read our profile the average person from that cluster so in the uh, assignment also you'll have to write all of this you'll have to define how many clusters who all are there in your cluster what all represents your cluster that's that's what you'll have to essentially do is there anything else savi yeah so uh, let's to know what the others uh, 216 for stand for you can just go to variables view and once you click on here Uh, you come to know that one is light user or medium heavy user. So if you want to decode what it means, uh, you will be able to understand. So just for that. Yeah, I think we're done. So this is how you do it, yeah. basically. Yeah, that's how we do it. And if you have any doubt, you can reach out to any of us. Yeah. For that, yeah. Hi guys.